Lake Mine Sky, Chapter 9 and 10. She agreed, and I told her she could get some free drinks, courtesy of the band. We always needed beautiful fans to buoy up the atmosphere. In fact, we regularly courted girls outside the venue to enhance the audience vibe and instructed the bartenders to put a few drinks for them on our tab. It was worth it as our reputation and the pubs was improved because the in place to be the cool band to see and they it would definitely attract male fans as they want to be at the gigs with the pretty girls after t i walked out of grandfather butterfly's tea room and onto the field past the parking area i just kept walking ahead of me was a forest surrounding farmlands life was pretty good considering other people's lives mine was just fine like John's older brother, working as a janitor, no girlfriend, aged almost 30. Or my uncle, a postman whose wife had died, whose son was in a Moroccan jail for drug dealing. Or that old chap at Dryden Pub who just drunk all night and flirted with young woman, who in turn just ignored him the more pints he emptied. He thought he was being witty and chatty, yet he just turned off the girls, who usually would just view him as a kindly avuncular character, or rarely, a brief, boozy affair. The old drinker was tolerated, but not respected. Girls, guitars, gigs, beer, pot, LSD music. I had it all. Even so, I kept it all in perspective by going to church once a month with my mother, and I felt that God sustained my lifestyle and protected me from harm, no matter what I did. I went into a grove of trees, hopping from branch to branch. A squirrel chattered, Worms poked up through the mud. It was a moment to ponder, and I think where I was going, I, I'd ride uh, this nearly 80 from a luxury apartment on the Côte d'Azur, recalling my life. <clears throat> oh, man, I wanted this so much, this lifestyle, the music and the glamour. Overall, creative expression had intrinsic value, however, and all the other things were secondary, and that's what I had to focus on because I always performed poorly and my inspiration dried up when I had my mind on other things. The results, the rewards, my ego image, their audience's adoration. There was a man at the edge of the glade, middle-aged, blonde, tall. It wasn't exactly like there was a real person there because he was nearly transparent, a ghost. He waved me over thinking it might be one of my dad's friends. I waved back yet I, I didn't approach. I just stood there. He was saying something. All was silence, though. What did he want? He was dressed like the typical inhabitant of my town. Actually, I thought it might have been, I might have seen him in the streets or in a shop sometime. A squirrel leaped from a branch. Distracted, I looked away. And then when I turned my head towards the man, he wasn't there. He was gone like he'd never been there. Okay, so wondering what this might mean and who it was, I continued walking into the grove. There arose in my mind a rainbow and a precipice. And quite a battle was being played out before me. Ancient soldiers screaming and yelling and bizarrely modern fighter jets flying over a head. The noise had become deafening and I had to cover my ears and crouch in fear. This lasted 15 minutes or so. Afterwards, there was a silence. I was stunned and remorseful for a life I had not lived. I had no regrets really, but suddenly I was burdened and I felt I could not escape. I then took a bus back to town, went home and fell asleep. The gig at Dryden Pub was that weekend, and it was great. We tried out some of our new songs, and the audience was responsive to the more experimental bits, such as acoustic guitar and flute interludes, long electric guitar drones with organ phrases and meditative voids. Then we'd launch it to something rockier. People dug that more. They were still trying to uh, understand or get the more unusual songs. All in all, they liked us, and the crowd uh, was bigger than the last gig. During one song, I sat on a big pillow beanbag thing and smoked a hookah pipe and did some yoga poses, then played some long electric solo improvisation, sort of like an Indian raga for sitar, while Thomas played the bongos. Some kids threw joints up on the bar on the stage. One girl tossed her bra onto Mike's head. Afterwards, Willow Tree Records a scout met us at the bar and uh, announced a definite date for the audio demo recording and our audition. We'd go up to London and stay in a flat for a few days and work at the company's studio during the day. We'd have a cellist and two violinists in the studio with us. Long drive in the van up to London, we <clears throat> stopped at a pub motorway 
hotel overnight be, because of a torrential rainstorm that flashed upon us with lightning and thunder on light we'd ever seen. There was no way we were going to continue driving into the hotel. I thought, I like these little motorway hotels, Thomas said. I brought a girl to here one last night. Oh, that was when you were back uh, on the way back from London, I asked. Yeah, I visited my uncle in London and met a girl there, got a ride back down with her. She had a nice car and we listened to some great music on the way. Oh, well, one thing led to another. We had to stop and get into bed, related Thomas, a boyish grin on his face. There was a folk singer in the hotel pub. She was pretty good, really. Little did we know that she'd be world famous within two years. Adorable, skinny singer, long yellow hair on a narrow, serious face. White rabbit, I requested. She did her best to imitate the opening intro riff and acoustic uh, solo, and then finger picked the chords and started the serpentine, pausing, lingering melody. I was in trance, and she did it better than Grace Slick, I thought. We smoked weed with her afterwards under the dripping eaves of the roadside hotel. More and more cars were pulling into the parking area, escaping the rainy night and checking into the hotel. Oh, I'd really like to go to California someday. I really think that's where it'll be happening, you know? She said, Oh yes, Laurel Canyon, Hollywood Hills, Marin County, Monterey. Groovy sounds coming out of there, I remarked. Oh, I dream of that, her eyes shone. Thunder cracked and growled, following a distant bolt, a flash of lightning. We're just trying to get into the UK top 40. Maybe it's a show on top of the pops, Thomas added. The girl took a cab into a nearby town after the gig. Thomas, the Casanova, had tried to flirt with her and had put his hand on her waist, giving her a squeeze to no avail. A few beers to the wind, I and the band retired to our hotel room, two in the bed, another on the sofa, and me on the floor. The girl took a cab into a nearby town after her gig. <laughs> 